Hi, in this video, I want to go over a quick proof of the rejection sampling algorithm. So just a reminder, why do we want to do rejection sampling? Well, suppose we want to sample from some distribution f of x, which is a bit too complicated. We only know it up to some constant. It could be that we also know it completely, but and it's still hard for us to sample from it. Or it could be that we only know it up to a normalizing constant. OK, so what is the algorithm? The algorithm is, is this thing over here. You have some proposal distribution, g of y, and you sample from it. And then you uh, also sample from a uniform distribution. And the proposal distribution, up to some constant, if you multiply it by a constant, has to completely cover or envelope the um, the distribution that uh, we do know how to calculate, yeah, the unnormalized distribution. So this quantity over here is always uh, less or equal to one because this thing will always be bigger or equal to this thing over here. And then if the uniform sample that we sampled is bigger, then this, then we, then this quantity, then we reject the sample. And otherwise, we accept the sample, and this is our, uh, and this is an observation from our sample. Okay, so the claim that uh, we want to make or we want to prove is that all the z's, all of the observation that we obtained from doing rejection samplings, actually come from a distribution uh, f of x. Okay, the real f of x. Um, this, okay, so either is, we want to say that z is either distributes f of x or that the samples that we obtain come from f of x. It's uh, the same. So how are we going to prove it? We are going to prove it via the uh, CDF. Um, the CDF of any distribution completely defines the distribution. So if you have a CDF of a certain distribution uh, that looks like the CDF of, let's say, a normal distribution, then your uh, distribution is normal. Okay, so we are going to look at this random variable z, and we're looking at the CDF of z at the point y. So this is basically the probability that uh, a random variable z is less or equal to y. Okay, but what is z? z is just a y value that we sampled from uh, the proposal distribution from g. The probability that it is less or equal to y is equivalent to the probability that y is less or equal to y, the big y. Yeah, but what it, what, when is it equivalent? It's equivalent when we know that we actually accepted the sample. So we know that some uh, random variable u that we sampled from a uniform distribution turned out to be less or equal to this quantity over here that we uh, calculated for, that, uh, for our y's. OK, so again, the probability of z being less or equal to small y is the probability of big y being less or equal to y, given that we actually accepted uh, this big y, yeah? and then it becomes a z. OK, so what we have here is a conditional distribution. Yeah, And how do we break a conditional distribution? Just by the regular laws of conditional distribution. It's just the joint distribution in the numerator yeah? and the uh, probability of the condition actually occurring. OK, and how do we move forward? Well, what is the joint distribution? U is uniform 0, 1. It is completely uh, independent from Y. Y is some, uh, comes from G of Y. It's some proposed distribution. It has nothing to do with U. So the joint distribution is just, is just the double integral of the PDF of y times the PDF of u. Okay, and the PDF of u is just one because it's uniform between zero and one. So the PDF is one. And the PDF of y is just g of uh, y. Okay, we, we just take it to be g of y. So this is what we have in the integrals here. And uh, u has to be less or equal to this. So the integral over u is from zero until this quantity. And y in the numerator is from minus infinity to y, to little y. And in the denominator, we'll use the law of total probability. And we should have had only this, but we will take the 
integral of also over the other variable in the joint. Actually, this thing is equal to yeah, just this thing. But we will do this. And why do we do this? Because, well, let's see. What is the integral of 1 du? It's just u, right? The integral of 1 du is just u. And then we have to put the two values that we have, 0 and the other value. And when we take the other value, we just get it here. OK, we get it in the uh, numerator and denominator. And here, the g's cancels in both the numerator and the denominator. The d, you can take them out, and they will cancel each other. They don't depend on the t's. OK, so we will be left only with uh, this expression over here. So we have this expression, and it's up to some normalizing constant, which we do not know, is equal to the actual desired distribution, f of t. So it's equal to, we can just replace both in the numerator and the denominator with c times f of t. And even though we don't know c, c can now go outside the integral and cancel each other. And we are left with this. And the numerator stays the same, but the denominator, since f is a valid uh, PDF, it's a valid distribution, the denominator is just equal to 1. And so we are just left with this. But this is exactly the definition of the CDF of x, of the variable x, because x distributes according to f of t. OK, so even though we do not know f of t, uh, it turns out that this algorithm, the z's that we are getting, is actually coming from this f of t. And this is the proof why rejection sampling actually works. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.